Today, we're gonna to learn how to connect AWS API Gateway to Lambda and call that API Gateway from our static website that we created in the last tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is create a Lambda function. So if it's not on your recently visited sites, you can go down to Compute and choose Lambda. And we're going to create a new function. So we are going to create a Lambda function from scratch and let's call this AWS Tutorial API. And it's running under Node.js, that is fine. That's what we're going to use. You can choose other languages if you want to, if you want to make this a Java or a Python or Ruby or anything, you could choose that for in this case, for this tutorial, we're gonna do a Node.js. And let's create our function. So here is a, this is our AWS tutorial API Lambda function that we created and pre filled out for us is already a Node.js function that responds with a JSON object with the status code 200 and it says hello from Lambda and that's going to be returned to us. We don't need to touch anything right now with, with this function. So we can leave this as is. So let's connect this Lambda function to AWS API Gateway. So I'm going to click um, this little, the shortcut here for the AWS console and open up as a new tab. And I'm going to go to the API Gateway. So API Gateway. So you may not have an API already created. I have one test here. So we're going to choose to create an API. So create API, and we're going to make a REST API. This is our RESTful service. This is where we have our RESTful verbs like get, put, post, delete, um, and patch. So we're gonna choose build, creating a REST, a REST API. We're gonna say it's a new API. We're not cloning it from anything. Um, and we're going to just call this AWS Tutorial API. And we're going to keep the endpoint type as regional. We don't need to change it. So let's choose Create API. So now we have an AWS Tutorial API. Um, it is empty. We don't have any methods. So we defined earlier our Lambda function that just returns back um, hello from Lambda. It doesn't do any updating or deleting of information. So we're going to make a new rest. Um, a new, so we're going to make a new method and we're going to call this a get because it's just retrieving information. So it's not updating information Hit our little checkbox. And now this creates our get method. So we need to set it up. We're going to be using a Lambda function and our Lambda exists in US East one. Um, if you're not sure, you go back to your Lambda, you can see what region that you're in. You have to choose the region that you're in. We're in North Virginia, so it's all in US East one. And we write down the Lambda function that we're using. So this is AWS tutorial API. We choose safe. So now it lets us know that we're adding permissions to our Lambda function because we're going to actually add the trigger from the API gateway to be able to call our Lambda function AWS tutorial. So we hit OK. And our method has been created. We can test this method. So we click test, do test. It returns back. This is the JSON response coming back status 200 and the body says hello from lambda we go back to our lambda function and we refresh this page we have a new trigger from our api gateway that can now invoke our aws tutorial api for the lambda function
So now we have just successfully created um, our connection from our API gateway to our, AW, our Lambda function. But how do we make our static website call the API gateway? So right now we have our get method set up, but it's actually not deployed anywhere. So we're only actually able to test this within AD, the AWS console. So we actually need to deploy our code. So we can choose deploy API. And we have no deployment stage at this moment. So we're going to make a new stage and let's call this production. So this is, let's call it prod. Um, so this is our stage name. This is our production environment. Um, and we're going to deploy our API. And my account has a little bit of restrictions because of it being AWS educate, but this air does this alert doesn't have anything that we need to worry about. So we have created our stage for production and we have our get method that invokes our code. So if we actually click this invoked URL, we get back our status code. Hello from Lambda. So I'm going to go back. And this is our invocation URL. So we want our static website to be able to call this endpoint. So I have some code right here. This is a test HTML file. Um, this is an extension of the index.html that I showed you in the last tutorial. Um, but on top of it, I have a little button that says click me that is going to actually return back the response from when we call the AWS Lambda function. The URL that we received when we deployed to our stage environment, that is what's right here. And I'm saying that I want the method get. And then the response is going to be JSON. And then I'm going to log that response. And I'm going to take whatever that response was and put it inside a little div. So I see actually hello, uh, hello from Lambda. So I am opening up my test HTML. It's actually just running on my desktop. It's not deploy jet on jet on the S3 bucket and we can still do all the tests that we need to do right here. And this will not work right now. So I'm opening up our developer tools and I'm going to hit click me and we get an error and it's actually being blocked by a cores policy. So cores stands for cross origin resource policy. And what is occurring is that we have an an item on a specific domain, but we're trying to call it from trying to call another domain. In our case, I'm running on my local hosts, but I'm trying to call VTR this domain. And the reason we're going to do this testing locally and then update this on our S3 bucket is because if you remember your domain for your S3 bucket is a completely different domain than this. So you're going to get this cores problem on if you upload this on your S3 bucket. So we need to set up our Lambda function to allow different domains. And in this case, we're going to allow all domains. But or you can allow all domains, but you can restrict it to allow specific domains. I'm just showing you the general way of doing this. So let's go back to our Lambda function. And what we need to do is have the response come back, allowing um, all headers. So we are going to add headers. So we add headers. And this will be access, control, allow, origin. And we're going to do a wild card for all. So asterisk. And do not forget your comma here, because if you don't have that comma, it's not a valid JSON object. So this is specifying that our headers are going to allow all origins. So we are going to save this. And then 
let's test on our API gateway that we are fine. So we're going to go back to our resources. Refresh the page for good measure. Go to our get, hit our test. And now we see our headers going here. We're not done yet. Okay, we need to actually enable cores also on our API gateway. And then we need to redeploy to production the update. So here, under our resources, under actions, we're going to choose enable cores. By default, it already has our access control origin to allow all. So we do not need to change any of this information here. So we click enable cores and replace existing cores headers. So it tells us, it gives us a summation of all the things we're changing. We're going to say yes, replace existing values. So now we have successfully updated this. So cores has been configured for this get method. So, and now you can see you have an options method enabled. So now we need to redeploy our get method. So go to our actions, deploy API. We're going to deploy it again to prod and click deploy. So now our API has been updated. Let's test our code. So let's go back to our test. Make sure that you reload this test or basically control F5 if you're on your S3 bucket or reload it in your browser. We're going to click, I'll open up our debugging tool. We're going to click, click me. There's our response coming back and hello from Lambda gets filled out. So the last thing to do is let's upload this test to our S3 bucket and see it working on our static website hosted on Amazon's S3 bucket. So I'm going to go back to our Amazon gateway. I'm going to go to my AWS management console and I'm going to go to my S3 bucket. This is Joanne Skiles 2 that we're going to do this test in. I'm going to upload the test.html file, which is on my desktop. So desktop test.html. Upload it. Here is our test.html file. I'm going to make sure I forgot to make it public, so I'm going to just make it public. Here it is. I'm accessing it. We're going to do click me and it works. So we are talking to Amazon API gateway, which is talking to our Lambda function and returning back and our course is enabled. All right. Congratulations. You've learned now how to talk to the API gateway and therefore to Lambda.